Howdy folks. Um, I've had some questions in comments on my recent two-part video series where I rebuilt a Tesla large drive unit, specifically out of a, a Toyota RAV4 EV. Uh, this car right here is actually kind of the sister car to that. This is a Mercedes E-Class or B250E, depending on the year they, they change the name, but effectively they're the same. Uh, but this uses a very similar large drive unit to the RAV4 EV. Uh, it's the same uh, reverse rotation setup with the special gear set and the, the parking pole mechanism. Um, there's a few differences on this uh, on the inverter side from the RAV4, but mechanically in terms of the motor and the gearbox, it's basically identical. Um, but kind of what I wanted to go over a little bit with this car, this car is actually also here for a motor rebuild. I'm not going to do a video on that because obviously I've already already covered that process. Uh, but what I did want to do is before I do the motor rebuild, I wanted to show um, kind of some things that you can look for if you have a car with one of these motors, whether it's uh, a B-Class, a Toyota RAV4 EV, or a Tesla Model S or X that are equipped with the large drive unit. So there's a few things that you can kind of look for uh, in terms of issues. Uh, the big one, of course, being coolant intrusion, uh, which will destroy the drive unit if you don't catch it early enough. So we're going to go over how to check that. Um, but I'm also going to show you uh, the other issue that this car has, which is it's got a milling noise. A lot of people don't even realize that this is an issue. They might buy a used EV uh, you know, a B-Class or a RAV4 or a Model S that has a pre-existing milling noise, and they might just think that's the way that it sounds. Or, alternatively, what might happen is when they buy the car, it doesn't have a milling noise, and it's kind of this gradual onset thing. And they might not even notice that it's developing because it's a, a gradual issue. Uh, and eventually it'll get to a point where it, it gets fairly noisy. Um, this car has a milling noise present that's, I would say, fairly prevalent. It's certainly nowhere near the loudest that I've heard, uh, but it's far from quiet as well. And as with most of the, the ones that I encounter, it's mostly present on acceleration. So when you're accelerating, you can hear the noise, but when you are coasting or you let off the throttle, the noise mostly goes away. Uh, that's the typical behavior when these milling noise issues pop up, but not necessarily always. Sometimes it's a noise that's present all the time, uh, and sometimes it's a noise that's present only on deceleration. Uh, but this would be the typical, typical uh, type of thing that I would see on these. So we'll take the car on a quick drive. I'm actually going to put a microphone uh, under the hood so that you can better hear the milling noise, um, just to kind of demonstrate what it sounds like. Alrighty, I'm out here in the B class, uh, and we're just going to demonstrate the milling noise. So, if we pull away from a stop here... You can hear that as I pick up speed, the, the frequency increases. And then if I let off the throttle, the noise basically disappears. Go back to accelerate, makes the noise again decelerate, the noise goes away. So anyway, that's the noise, um, and I'll, uh, I'll actually show you on a cut-apart bearing uh, what causes that noise. Alright, so you heard the milling noise there, so now the question is, what causes that? And the answer that is kind of complicated. There's a couple different things that can cause it. Um, the first is coolant intrusion. Um, if there's coolant intrusion into the motor, it can actually cause the grease to get washed out of the rotor bearings, and then uh, corrosion can start to form in the races, and then they start to make noise. Uh, cause number two is kind of dependent on when the motor was built. If it's a really, really early large drive unit that has steel rotor bearings, um, there can be wear pattern issues on those caused essentially by arcing between, uh, you know, through the races and the balls of the bearings going from the rotor, the rotor shaft, to the actual case of the motor. On later iterations starting in 2014, uh, Tesla started installing uh, a hybrid ceramic rotor bearing, 
which is non-conductive and eliminates this, those issues on the rotor itself. But on the primary drive gear bearings in the gearbox, they're still uh, conductive steel bearings. So this right here is actually um, half of the inner race from one of those uh, primary drive gear bearings. And if you look at it here, you can see there's kind of the, the, this sort of striation pattern on the inner race here. And that's what you're hearing. That's what that noise is. So this kind of makes an uneven surface for the balls to travel across. And you can kind of almost think about it like, uh, I don't know, like a corrugation or uh, like washboards on a dirt road. That's basically what this is. And that noise that you're hearing is those balls traveling over this wear pattern and making that milling noise. And this is caused by that same thing that I was talking about earlier on the rotor bearings is uh, it's basically arcing between the shaft of the rotor, or in this case, the shaft of the primary drive gear, which is, you know, sort of indexed attached to the rotor. And then that arcing is traveling from this inner bearing race to the steel ball, and then to the outer bearing race, which is of course pressed into the case. So whenever I rebuild one of these, they always get new, uh, new primary drive gear bearings just because this is such a prevalent issue. Uh, that RAV4 EV that I did the motor rebuild on didn't actually have this problem. Uh, but just by default, I always replace these bearings because it's, it's such a prevalent problem. Um, and it's one of those things where while you have it all apart, you might as well fix it right the first time. So whenever I rebuild these, I use uh, a hybrid ceramic bearing for the primary drive gear as well as the rotor. So. Uh, that's something that you won't get on a factory drive unit from Tesla. You only get the ceramic bearings on the rotor itself. But I always do them on this primary drive gear as well. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of what causes that noise is just that weird wear pattern. And this is not the end of the world. Um, you know, this is not going to lead to destruction of the motor or anything. It just is annoying, essentially, it makes noise. Um, I mean, I suppose in the extreme long term, maybe you could have excessive wear issues caused by this, but it's not something that is, at least in the shorter term, going to lead to destruction of the motor. Uh, but now let's look at the other problem, which is the most common killer of these drive units, and that's coolant intrusion. All right, we've got the Mercedes up here on the lift. And of course, as I said before, the big killer for these large drive units is coolant intrusion. And there's no real symptoms for when a coolant intrusion issue is happening, apart from either the motor starting to seize up or uh, maybe bearing noise, but not always. They don't always develop bearing noise issues before it basically gets destroyed. Once it gets to a point where the car starts uh, throwing codes for isolation faults or shutting down or anything like that, that's bad news and you might be in a situation where the drive unit's not really rebuildable, uh, at least not without replacing some of the really major components. So what I'm gonna show you is how to check for the coolant intrusion uh, yourself, which is pretty easy. Um, I have the car up here on the lift just for ease of access, but you don't have to have a lift to do this. It's pretty simple. Um, but the first thing you wanna do is just turn the wheels all the way to the right so that you can get access in here. And that applies to the RAV4 EV as well. And then in the wheel well here, there's, uh, there's just kind of this plastic access panel. It's a little bit different on the RAV4. On the RAV4, it has four clips. It would have two on the bottom. So one, you know, somewhere around here underneath and then the other one up here. And then it would have two up here on top. On the B-Class, it's even simpler. There's just one clip right here. So we'll go ahead and pop that guy out. That's removed. And then it has just a screw with an eight millimeter head on it up here. And then all we have to do is move that flap out of the way. And the speed sensor is right 
in there. I'm actually going to move the camera so that you can see it better. So that right there is the speed sensor. And to check for coolant intrusion, all we're going to do is just remove that and look at it visually. Um, so first things first, we'll just unplug it. Just has that little clip on the front edge here. Sometimes they can be a little tight and you want to make sure not to break off the clip there because that's the only thing that holds it in. And then it just has a bolt right here in the bottom of it. We'll go ahead and loosen that off. And then it's just as simple as pulling it out. Sometimes they can be a little bit tight. But that one wasn't too bad. And uh, so you can see I've got it here. I'll pull you out of there so that we can see a little bit better. All right, so there's the speed sensor that we just pulled out. And if you take a look at it, you can see it's got quite a few droplets of coolant on it. That's also magnetic. That's why that sticks to it. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's got a bunch of droplets of coolant. And then there's also some signs of kind of dried up coolant or corrosion around it. And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what you're looking for. If you've got any kind of presence of coolant on here, that's kind of a bad sign. Focus. There you go. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what you're looking for. And that's what you want to avoid having is coolant in the drive unit. So this drive unit's going to get a rebuild, uh, both to fix this issue as well as the bearing noise. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how simple it is to pull this and check it, um, at least for the B-Class and the Toyota RAV4 EV. If you have a Tesla Model S or a Model X, it's a bit more complicated. You have to pull the bottom uh, kind of skid plate cover off the rear of the car, and you kind of have to have the car on at least a set of ramps or something where it's high enough that you can actually crawl underneath it. Um, and then it's a pretty tight space to get access to this thing uh, because it's kind of, when it's in the car, the, the subframe rail kind of runs right alongside this. So there's not a ton of space, uh, but it is possible to do. So as I'm putting this together, I realized that I didn't really include a very good explanation of where the coolant is actually coming from. Uh, the coolant that you're seeing on the speed sensor is actually leaking from a seal that's in this aluminum housing. You kind of see this round protrusion here on the housing. And there's a seal in there that rides on the rotor shaft. And that's what's leaking. Um, the sensor just happens to be right next to the seal. So if the seal is leaking, you're going to end up with coolant on the sensor. Um, so that's kind of the gist of why, how that leak occurs. And it's just super super prevalent on these motors um, and really the there's not really much avoiding it um, it's just a matter of catching it early uh, you know like cancer basically you you want to catch it uh, before it becomes you know a major deal so anyways that's that um, the other thing to keep in mind for these is if you do have coolant intrusion and it's not too major yet i mean this one was starting to have a little bit of signs of maybe some corrosion which is not a great sign uh, but it also has the bearing noise issue um, but if you catch it super early or even before any leakage occurs at all what you can do is install a rotor coolant delete manifold just like i did in my rav4 ev large drive unit rebuild and what that does is it eliminates the rotor cooling circuit and thus the seal here um, and that complete completely you know permanently fixes this issue um, it's actually a modification that tesla has only just recently made to production versions of this motor i don't think that they do that do that for the b-class or the rav4 ev just for model s and model x but they actually have a factory version of a rotor coolant deleted motor that's you know as of right now uh you know end of july 2024 it's only been out for maybe about eight months now i think uh i think that the first one started going out in november or december of, of 2023 so that's uh that's that that would be you know the factory version of rotor coolant delete 
Tesla doesn't make the parts available to install their factory manifold. So the only way to retrofit a rotor coolant delete to an existing motor is to go aftermarket. So of course I've got the QC charge manifolds that I use. Uh, there's other options out there too. Um, I've seen you know some versions where they eliminate the flyover tube up here. Not so sure that I'm a big fan of that because um, it kind of eliminates some it, it, it creates air pockets in the cooling system and potentially might lead to issues with uh, reduced cooling for the gearbox oil. Um, but anyways, I digress. Uh, that's pretty much it for, for the issues there. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and get started on doing a rebuild for this thing and uh, we'll get it back on the road. Alrighty, well that's going to do it for this video. It's a pretty short one, uh, but I just kind of wanted to go over some of the common large drive unit failure modes because uh, I have been getting some questions about that. But really it boils down to two main things, coolant intrusion and bearing noise, um, which may or may not be related depending on your particular situation. But the big one to be aware of in particular is the coolant intrusion. So if you have a car that is equipped with a large drive unit, whether it's a Mercedes B-Class, a Toyota RAV4 EV, or a Tesla Model S or Model X equipped with the large drive unit, which in case you didn't know, would be any of the performance versions of Model S and Model X, as well as the rear wheel drive versions of Model S, um, built from the beginning in 2012, up until before the most recent Palladium refresh in 2021. Um, so all those have the large drive unit. And it's really imperative that you stay on top of checking for coolant intrusion on all those vehicles. Um, I'll try and do a video soon whenever I have a Model S in the shop to show how to do the speed sensor check, but there's other videos out there on YouTube uh, that you can check to, to find that stuff. It's pretty simple to do. The biggest issue on Model S and Model X is just you have to be able to crawl under the car. So really you need like a set of ramps and you have to pull that plastic uh, kind of skid plate splash shield off of the bottom. Not a big deal, but it's a little bit more difficult than these cars. Um, and of course, if you happen to be in the Pacific Northwest or more specifically in the Portland area, I will check your speed sensor for free, regardless of whether it's a B-Class, RAV4, Model S, Model X. If you want to bring your car by, that's uh, that's just something I do as a as a complimentary check. Only takes you know 10 or 15 minutes at the most. Um, but anyways, uh, if you got any other questions related to large drive unit stuff, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I try to read all the comments and answer as many as I can. Um, and yeah, that's going to do it for this video. So uh, stay tuned for the next one.